Abba Yahuwah, we love and appreciate you. Appreciate your son, Yahushua. Uh, we choose you all again afresh and anew today. And just want to show our love for you by keeping your commandments. Shem Yahushua, amen. All right, tonight we're going to, and so uh, I need everybody to look at my balance guide one more time before we get started, because this is what this life is all about. The more balanced you are, the better off you are. And this will help you uh, get out of situations and circumstances, because sometimes we get in a jam, and what takes over our emotions. Should we live by our emotions? No. Why? Because they're like an EKG. They're all over the place. And so we want to be like this little guy. You put him down. In fact, the scripture says a just man falls how many times? And he does what? Get back up again. That's why it's so important for us to keep getting back up. No matter how many times we fall, we want to what? Get back up again. And so uh, that's important in this journey. And that's what being balanced is all about learning to take pain and pleasure failing and success and learning do i talk all the time or do i listen part time learning to love and hate receive and give all these things that we have to be balanced in this journey if, if you want to uh, uh be an overcomer you have to learn to balance yourself some people want to get in here and they want to run like a house of fire but that's not the way this journey is because it's a marathon and not a sprint see and so a person that's balanced in a, in a marathon he doesn't use all his strength at once he just uh gradually lets his strength go it's not like a sprint where they put all the energy in that first hundred yards or 200 yards whatever they're running 400 yards but we need to be balanced go to hebrews 12 and 1 and so we can run this race with what? Patience. It, take, it takes balance to be patient. By Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So that's why we need to lay aside every weight, and the sin that does so easily beset us because weights are things that we are worried about that we're so concerned about that we can't see the truth a lot of people walk in fear and uh, uh yahoo didn't give us the spirit of fear but what power love and a sound mind and so uh, we need to learn how to handle fear have you some scriptures ready when fear pops up that you use to help us overcome it. This is what we call being balanced. To learn to deal with what life throws you. There was a meme that says, uh, uh, I never want to stop learning because life is always what? Teaching us stuff. Life's going to teach you something, whether you like it or not. So you might have well learned to learn how to be balanced so we can uh, deal with things. And that's the key. We had it not too long ago. It's what you do next. So. When things happen, that's what, are you balanced enough or are you letting your emotions get to you? Because when your emotions get to you, you're toast. I'm just going to tell you just like it is. Because the emotions are all over the place. And it just keeps you, uh, you, you make this a mountain out of a molehill. Before you know it, it was started out as a bean and now it's this big. Because that's what emotions do for you. It just drives you and drives, it's a slave master. And it just drives you and drives you and drives you. But if we're balanced, when things happen, we'll know that there is pain and pleasure in life. There is failure and success in life. I'm going to see that. And so uh, that's what being balanced is so important in this journey. Uh, let's go to uh, Philippians 4 and 11 through 13. Paul was telling us he had been through a lot, a lot of things that he'd learned. Whatsoever state he's in to do what? Be content, balanced. In Philippians 4, beginning in verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever, whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed to be both full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. 
but I can do all things to the Messiah who strengthens me. Why? Because he's balanced. He knows there are going to be some good days, there are going to be some bad days. There's going to be some days of pain, there's going to be some days of pleasure. So, some people think it all be all pleasure. Life's not that way. If you think it's that way, you, you've got the bad brain. It, life is not that way. Uh, I don't care where you go, what society you're in, what tribe you're with, or whatever you want to fill in the blank with, they all have something in common. I don't care where you go. They all have what? Pain and pleasure. They all have to deal with failure and success. I don't care where you go. And, and that's why we need to have the mindset of an inventor because we're going to fail sometimes. Sometimes we're going to fall flat on our face. Even though we tried hard, we just fell flat. But you remember, pain and failure a, is a blessing in disguise. So it, it tells us, I need to change roads I'm on. I need to change what I'm doing. Uh, if I'm trying to drive a, a nail and I'm using all my strength and I keep bending the nail, what do I need to do? Back off a little bit and drive the nail, see? Power's a good thing, but you gotta use it in, in balance or you'll, you'll destroy the very thing you're trying to uh, work on. And especially in, in carpentry, you gotta be really soft with, when you're putting on a, a what was you putting on today? A baseboard and trim work and cabinetry, you gotta be real good with that hammer or you'll destroy the very thing you're trying to make beautiful. And so this is very important to us that we learn to be balanced no matter what it is, we have to have a balance of it. Uh, you don't want uh, all sugar, you don't want all salt, but you, you, you could have a balance of it, see? Some people want all this, and no, you don't need all of that. That's why uh, it's good to be a, uh, uh, what do you call it, an omnivore? Or yeah, that eat some vegetables and some meat. Some people just want vegetables, not good for you. Some people just want meat, not good for you. You need a balance of both, see? Just look at Noah. He didn't save the, all the vegetables. He saved us what? Meat. So we need a balance of things because the, there are some things we can get from vegetables we can't get from meat. There are some things we can get from meat we can't get from vegetables. And I've watched people that are vegans, and the number one thing wrong with them, stomach problems. I've watched them over and over and over again. They begin to have stomach problems. And so that's why it's good to be balanced in the journey. Eat some vegetables and eat some meat. Doesn't say how much you have to have, but you know, balance yourself up because life is gonna bring you pain and it's gonna bring you pleasure. Uh, sometimes uh, things just happen uh, out of the blue, we'll call it. So how do you handle that? That's the key. How do you handle this situation? Do you say, oh, everybody's against me. It's all oh, my fault. Really? Get a grip. See, that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you emotional because you're easy to control when you're emotional. Uh, that's why you see uh, uh, a lot of emotionalism in religion because people are easy to control when they're emotional because the, the emotion drives them one way instead of being balanced. How many see that? Let's go to Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 and we'll see this a little bit more. Ecclesiastes 3, beginning in verse 1. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. So what is that telling us? We're going to get from both sides. So how do you handle both sides? Is to be balance that what keeps us walking see even uh, some people they put their legs together what are they gonna be 
going to be easy to get knocked over. I mean, if you get them too wide, you, you, there ain't nothing you can do. But you want, that's why he made us walk with balance. And that's one of, the, one of the things you see people have a hard time with is balance, just walking. And so once we learn that life is about balance, I won't get overly uh, into this or overly into that because I want to be balanced. I want to be able to handle pain and pleasure the same. That's what Paul was saying. Paul was saying, I have learned to be content whatever state I'm in. See, whether he was in pain, whether he was in pleasure. Why did he learn to be content? Because he knew the end result was, if Yahuwah will be for us, so these things are there to do what? Make us balanced. See, uh, what's the difference between a, a, a grown-up and a, a mo I'll say some grown-ups <laughs> and children? Maturity or balance, see? That's the thing. Because a child, he's just... <laughs> but uh, a grown-up, he'll know uh, life ain't quite like that. If I do it too hard, I'll just tear up everything. <laughs> and so that's what the difference we have learning to be balanced in this journey so we can be our best. See, this is what we all these lessons about is being our best, being the best believer we can be. I always want to put be the best I can be. I'm not here to uh, be a guru and, and upstage everybody. That doesn't mean anything because that's not why we love you. We love you because what? You walk in this journey. That's why we love you. I don't care how good you are or that. It's okay. It has its place. But the main thing is, is we're all going the same way. We're doing the same. That's where the love comes in. Because everybody has their gifts and calling. Amen? Another thing people don't realize is we're all ignorant. It depends on what the topic is. Amen? Is that right? We can talk about topics that if you don't know about it, you're what? Doesn't mean you're stupid, you just don't know. That's what that means. See? If uh, uh I'm not I don't know but much about calculus, but hey. So I'm ignorant to it. But it doesn't mean I'm stupid, it's just I don't know how that. But I don't get over balance because I don't know because how often do I use it? <laughs> See, I said, the main thing is reading, writing, and arithmetic. I use that every day. Or calculus and all those other things. You want you scientists and engineers and you know specialty. But everyday life, I want to know reading, writing, and arithmetic. That keeps me balanced because uh, here's the thing about a reading. We got to learn how to read because you don't know what's in the document if you can't read. I've watched some of the cowboy uh, movies and they say, I can't read, read this for me. Wow, that's a shame. See, and that's why it's so important to learn to read because you want to know for yourself. That's what the scripture says, what? Study, Study to show yourself approved under Yahweh. A workman need not be ashamed. Right, right, right. See? <laughs> And that's another thing. People get in the Word and they think it's all about the Word. No, it's not. Because what? After you read that book, what do you got to do? You put it to it. You got to walk this thing out. <laughs> okay, how long you study? See, it's not about how long you study. It's about what you walk out. That's the key. Because we have, we've known people that studied and studied and studied and studied, and boy, they were way out there in the left and right field, and you wonder how in the world they got out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were no people that uh, physically that were smart in a certain area. We knew I knew a plumber in school, college, straight A's. But you go out there and tell him to plumb that house, he couldn't do it. See, he was overbalanced. He didn't know how to do the physical thing. He could do the books, but he couldn't do the physical thing. Sir. But anyway, uh, that's why we're learning to be balanced in all that we do so that we can uh, uh, be better believers, better mentors, one toward another, to help each other. See, uh, 
Each one of us has got something that the other one needs. And that's why it takes all 12 tribes. One tribe's got this, one tribe's got this, one tribe's got this, one tribe's got that. It takes all 12 tribes to be all Israel. And that's why we need each and every one because some uh, can cook, some can sew, uh, some can uh, carpentry, some can uh, do computer things, and you, you fill in the blank. So it takes all of that to make up the, the body of Mashiach. And so we don't want to, like the scripture says, uh, the hand can't say to the eye, I have no need of thee, because we would be unbalanced. See, so I need my hands, and I need my uh, eyes also to be balanced. That's what, how we learn to be balanced is using the, the uh, um, gifts and uh, attributes that the Father has given us. We don't want to be way over here because we're easy to knock over. See that? If I'm leaning like this, you can just do, I'm over. But if I got my feet just enough apart, it's hard to knock me over. See? And so I, that's why I need a balance of the word and the spirit, and I need a balance of walking this thing out. See, I can talk a good game, but if I don't walk it, what good is it? See? A lot of people like to talk. Some people don't realize they talk too much. So what's the difference in talking and listening? Listening is so important. How do you think I write these songs? Because I'm all, I got my ears listening. I was listening to uh, Shane said, um, uh, your light ain't shining when you're whining. Uh, one girl said, uh, uh, what about uh, the drama? And so I wrote a song about that. Uh, uh, no, not drama, data dump. Uh, uh, Shane and Kim talked about bad brain. I wrote a song about bad brain. I was walk, running down the road in my truck, listening. See, if, if you want to learn, you got to listen. When I was a little boy, my uncle always told me, he would say, Jimmy, talk half the time, listen half the time. That's the key. If you want to learn, you got to listen. Very important in this journey. And so uh, I was going down the road and there was this preacher. He was preaching, you can't get mad at everybody. And he says, remember, this is just like uh, those Saturn fives on the side of the, the, the uh, Apollo or the space uh, craft. And they only made to take you what? And then they fall away. Do, I, do the do, 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 does NASA get mad at those rockets called it fall off? No, they were supposed to fall off, and that's why some people are. And so that's why we got to be balanced and not get mad at everybody that's in and out of our lives. Because remember, the Father sent some people in our lives to gouge us because uh, we've been in one place too long. See, but it's what we do with those things, and that's why. I listen because I'm always trying to say, where is my next song coming from? Because I'm listening to who says this, who says that. Um, uh, I'm working on a song now. Uh, what's the name of it? Not just a booster. Uh, I was on the bottom, but I made it to the top. Where did I get that from? Well, when I began to look at the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and all of those, David, they were once on the bottom. And so I'm, I'm listening for things that will help us. And listening is so important in this journey. If you really want to learn, learn to listen. This is how you help people. And here's another thing, how you help people. It's not necessarily what's coming out of their mouth. Okay? Because they can be coming out of things coming out of their mouth, but underneath they're hurting. They seem like they're the jolly and, and all of this, but underneath they're hurting. You heard the old song, Tears of a Clown? Well, that's what people do. They're, they're a clown and, and they don't really want to show it so that uh, they have tears, but, but they don't want to refer to show it so they act a clown. So that's what we have to be, learn to be is balancing the journey. Listening is a key in this journey to help us be better. It's all right to talk, but it's, just look at Yahushua. 
Do you see him talking all the time? No. He's listening. Because he would ask Peter now. Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? See, because he was listening to what? Their conversation. How did he find out who wanted to be the greatest? He was listening to their conversation. See? That's why listening in this journey is so if you want to learn, start listening. You'll find out more about a person just listening. And that's what I do when I meet people. I just sit them and they just <laughs> and sometimes they give me a, a what is it, TFI or two TMI, too much information. I'm thinking, oh boy, I should have said something. Oh, like, I said, eh, I don't need to know all that. But listening is a key. That's how you help people. See, because sometimes they're saying things, but underneath they're saying, I need help. I need help. Amen. So that helps us be balanced. There's a time to talk. There's a time to listen, because somebody needs help. And they may express it in different ways. Somebody uh, uh, may laugh, but underneath, what are they saying? Somebody may cry, but underneath, what are they saying? So I have to listen to try to find out what's going on. See, and that's why I say when I need, meet new people, I just let them. Before I know it, I whew, I know the background here because what I listen. And this helps us in our journey to learn to listen. Then we got to learn to love and hate. Because sometimes we need to love those that hate us and hate those that say they love us. See, sometimes people say, oh, I love you, I love you. Really? Your actions prove different. Get that uh, First Samuel 2 and 5 or Second Samuel 2 and 5 where uh, by our actions, we're weighed in the actions. So he's looking for what's going on in our journey. Are we balanced? See, we're going to be weighed. We're going to be weighed or balanced to see what kind of balance we got. Are we leaning too far? That's why. That's where I got the song from. Are you balanced? Or are you leaning to the side? It's First Samuel 2 and 3. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we need to love the ones that say that hate us. And sometimes we have to hate the ones that say they love us because they only say it, but then their actions prove different. See, so always look at a person's actions. Yes, ma'am. Are you talking about the love less kind of hate? Yeah. I'm not talking about go beat them up. There are times when we have to beat people up that's our enemy. Uh, we do have enemies, as in uh, when David met Goliath, Goliath was an enemy, so he had to do what? Take him out. Uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees was the enemy in the tabernacle, so what you should have to do? He made him a strap and ran him out. So we have to be balanced with that. We can't fight all the time. <laughs> See, and remember, in this balance, we have to learn to be a balance between a lamb and a lion. What do we want to be most of the time? A lamb. Because a lion's ferocious and he'll tear a lot of stuff up. But there are times to let the lion show up. Because when they're coming against the truth or family and stuff like that, that's time to, to let the lion loose. And so that lets us know how to be balanced because Yahushua was the lamb. And he was also a lion. So most of the time we seen him, he was a lamb. Because he didn't want to tear everything up. <laughs> See? But there was a time he had to show himself. Even with, with his own disciples. The lion rose up when, when Peter said, uh, not so, Master. Uh, I'll go with you. And he said, what did he say? Get behind me, Satan. Well, that, that wasn't a lamb. Lambs don't do that. <laughs> the lions do so we have to be balanced in this journey to help ourselves and in order to help others. How many see that? We got to learn, what does it take? What does it take? Do I need to do this or do I need to do this? How do I handle this? Because if you don't, well, the emotions will take over and you're toasting. I've seen so many people get emotional 
and they just lose it. See, that's what we don't want. We can be a lion and a lamb, but there's times you, but that emotional thing, I, I look at so many people, and we're talking about Shane and bad brain. It was his emotions that were having him with the bad brain. But Kim calmed him down, so now he's balanced. He know how to handle that thing, see? Because things are going to come at us. And if we're not careful, we'll get emotional. We're toast. It's just over with. It's not, uh, emotions have their place, and like, like that little baby. She come and let me hold, and I, I stole some of that sugar. <laughs> See, that's an emotion. But I'm not trying to take the baby and boom. See, you don't want to do that. So we have to be balanced in our journey. Whatever we do, learn to have a balance of this thing. Because uh, there's going to be highs in your life, and there's going to be lows in your life. What are you going to do? Are you going to cry every time you get to the low place? No, we're going to learn that life has a low place. Show me one of the patriarchs and all go through the scriptures. Show me one that didn't have a low place. They have low places. So there are going to be low places in your life. But how do you have them? Can you be balanced with it? Because uh, remember, where does the exalt from? The bottom, the low place. So we need to think like, uh-oh, I'm on bottom. He must going to be exalted in some way, shape, or form. See? Instead of saying, oh, they're all against me. They're all trying to hate me. Really? See, you just got emotional. You're not looking at the truth because the truth says, if y'all who be for us, who can be against us? Here's another scripture that I often use when, when uh, emotions try to get a halter or a fault. Let's go to, what is that? Um, 2 Corinthians 10 and 3, I think it is, where it says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing exalted itself against the knowledge of Elohim and bringing into captivity what? It's those thoughts. And then that's where we need really had to work on balance because these thoughts, some of them are ours and some of them the devil sends our way. So we got to be balanced in our thought life because that's where the battle is. It's in our thought life. It's not physical, but it's in our thought life and in our imagination. Uh, was that correct? Yeah, Second Corinthians 10 and 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Elohim to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down imaginations, imaginations and every high thing see. that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yahweh and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Messiah. Two things there, imaginations and thoughts. Wow. Sometimes they can drive us up the wall, can't they? Because we're thinking this and thinking that. And before we know it, we're out of control, totally out of control, just from our imagination and our thoughts. And so how do I handle those situations? I got to learn to be balanced. I'm going to have pain and I'm going to have pleasure. I'm going to have failure and I'm going to have success. Sometimes I'm going to be loved. Sometimes I'm going to be hated. It's just the way life is. See, in fact, the scripture says, warn to him when everybody speaks well of you. <laughs> See, when they do that, you know, you, you cross the line. So what do you do? Learn. Learn. This journey is difficult. And every day is not going to be a good day. And every day is not going to be a bad day. So I got to learn to balance it. Because I'm going to have good days and I'm going to have bad days. Brother Mike asked me a while ago, is everything all right? And I said, yeah, I'm having one of those days. I'm 71, so I have good days and bad days with the forest physical. Some days I'm, some days I'm a little bit slower. But 
it's just part of life. So I have to accept that's the way this journey is. And that's what helped me to stay balanced. Amen? Um, Acts 20 and... I'm not sure what that is. Maybe 35. It says it's it's uh, better to give, better to give than to receive. And so we have to learn to be balanced in giving and receiving. What's wrong with the generation today? All they want is you <laughs> just give it. Yeah, Acts 20 and 35. I've showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Master Yahushua, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now the question is, it's more blessed to give than to receive, but do we stop receiving? No. Why? Hmm? Say that again. your time to receive and you take away somebody else's blessing if That's you it. don't allow them to give see if you. you don't allow them to bless you you take away somebody else's blessing see the people say, oh, no did you see you who should turn down everything no they blessed him you say okay hmm? so we got to learn to be balanced in giving and receiving see sometimes it's I want them the other person to be blessed, but how they get blessed? What does Luke uh, 6.36 say? Uh, give. I think it's Luke 6.36. And it shall be given unto you. Good pleasure. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken, and running over shall men give into your... What you got to do first, what? You got to give. 38, 6.38. 6.38, okay. yeah. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together. And running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. See what you tell me. Be balanced in my giving and receiving. I got to give in order to receive. Yahushua you, you came down. He said, I became poor that you might become rich. So he gave, didn't he? For y'all so loved the world that he gave his. Say he gave. And Yahushua said this. No man takes my life. I lay it down freely. See, when we give, give freely. Don't give it grudgingly. Where's that in uh, 1 Corinthians 11 where it talks about he that gives it grudgingly shall reap uh, uh, sparingly. So when you give, be thankful that you're able to give. Some people are not able to give. That's 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. Okay. It says, but this I say, he which sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. There's a verse above that or something where it says grudgingly. All right, so verse 7 says, Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for Elohim loves a cheerful giver. So here's what we got to realize. If we give grudgingly, what happens to it? The father throws it in the trash. Because he wants what? A cheerful giver. So you might as well keep it. If you say, oh, <laughs> just keep it. You got too much on it, see? So we got to learn. Yeah, some, that's grudging. See, I'm supposed to give, uh, but I really don't want to give. Just keep it. Because you get all kind of bad spirits and things going on. And so that's why he said he loves a cheerful giver. Be thankful that you're able to give. See, that's what he wants. And here's what people get messed up with. It's not about how much. Who went down more justified? The widow with two mites or the BZOs and the gates and all them? <laughs> the widow with the two mites. 
because she gave it cheerfully. She, she wasn't, uh, he given that much. I'm, I'm going to that ain't the way to give. Give from the heart. Give what the, the rock is leading you to give. Give it. And be happy that you're able to give. Some people don't have it to give. Mm -hmm. And when you give, like you said, don't expect something back. But if you give, something is coming back. Because we have a principle that cannot be changed or altered because it says... Uh, so, and guess what? It's coming back to you. Reaping and sowing. So if you give, something's coming back. You just got to be careful what you give. <laughs> what spirit you're giving it in. Remember, how you send it out, coming back at you. So, if I send out things uh, cheerfully, guess what? Somebody's going to come and bless me cheerfully. Not that I'm looking for, but that's just a principle. See, once it's written, it can be changed all to Whatsoever man soweth, so shall he reap. So, this, you don't, as she was saying, you don't give to say, I want it back from you. That's not how it works. It may come from somewhere over here. See? So if you give like that, you're giving wrong. See? So, when you give, give freely and cheerfully. Who knows where the Father is going to send it to you back from? See? Because if once you sow, it's coming up. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, it's coming up. And that's what being balanced all all about. Uh, learning to be able to receive and learning to be able to give. Some people don't want, they don't want, don't you give me nothing. Well, you stop that person from getting their blessing. See? What if the Yahushua said, take your two mites and put it, but it, she wouldn't have got their blessing. See? Supposing Elijah told the little widow woman, uh, forget about you. All you got is a handful of meal and, and a crew, little crew's all and two sticks. But because she gave, look what happened to her. See? That's a way to give. There's a way to receive. And that's about it being balanced. That's what this journey is all about. Learning to balance yourself up. Because things are going to come at you. You got to learn how to handle them. That's the key. Learning how to handle what life throws at you. And remember, it's all about what? Overcoming. When you're balanced, you can overcome things because you realize there's pain and pleasure. There's love and hate. There's riches and poverty. That's what Paul said. I've learned to be content with whatever state I'm in. Will I suffer need? Will I, will I, I have it all? See? And remember, the most dangerous place is in where? Pleasure. Adam and Eve were in. Asitam was in. David was in. And the list goes on and on. That's why pleasure is all right, but that's why we got to really be careful in pleasure. Because here's the reason why we let our guards down. You look at some of the, uh, give you a good example, you look at some of the pro athletes made millions of dollars doing their uh, career. And some of them working at Starbucks and some of them in prison. Why? Because the money dried up and they didn't know what to do. See, they weren't balanced. And uh, that's why I like now, most colleges is teaching the guys how to, how to handle money. Because if you don't know how to handle money, money will do you in. See, and that's why I, I always say, give some, say some, invest some, and, and uh, spend some. See, that means I know how to handle it when I do get it. If you, and remember, Yahushua said, uh, uh, how do you have it up? Uh, uh, You've been faithful over what? A few things. So he's looking at us where? In that little bitty thing we don't think much of. That's your biggest test. You don't think much of it, but he said if you can handle the little things or the few things, you can handle the big things.
So how we handle that little bitty thing is a picture of how we handle the big things. That's, what is, that's why we're learning to be balanced here, because we want to handle the little thing so we can handle the big things. Because remember, uh, if you plant, it's going to come up. But as it goes down one seed, it don't come up one seed, do it? What do you plant? Do you put one in and you get one back? So we got to know a carrot. <laughs> but we got to learn how to handle plants. Because it, you sow, it's coming back. You sow, it's coming back. That's very important in the journey to get learn to balance yourself up because you're going to be up one day and down the next. See, I watch people. Some days they're so cheerful, and the next day they're depressed. They're not balanced. See? And that's why I say it's so important to use scriptures to deal with depression. Because the depression is one of the things the enemy uses against us. And so one of the scriptures I use for depression is, uh, if y'all who will be for us, who can be against us? Another one is, this is the day y'all who has made, I will rejoice and be glad they're in. See, that, that, see and this is what, what people don't look Depression, depression is down here, but when I read, quote that scripture, it lifts me up, up above these things. That's why we got to have scriptures. See, the enemy only understands the scriptures. When you, who should, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 4, and I think it started verse 4. We'll see how the master did it. <laughs> did he say, oh, I'm the greatest in the world? No, he didn't say that. He said, it is written. By Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. I read but, the question. So when the tempter came to him, he said, if you be the son of Elohim, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. So then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, if you be the son of Elohim, cast yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest at any time you dash your foot against the stone. And Yahushua said to him again, it is written, you shall not tempt Yahweh your Elohim. Again, the devil took him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, All these things I'll give you if you'll fall down and worship me. And Yahushua said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship Yahweh your Elohim, and him only shall you serve. So what was he trying to get him to do? Get emotional. You know, he could have said, You know I'm the son of Elohim. You know who I am. You was up there in heaven when I was sitting at the right hand. But he didn't do that. See, he said, it is written. And if that's the way he did it, guess what? That's the way we got to do it. He's the master. Who won? He did. He had to go off and leave him alone. Why? Because he's quoted scripture. Remember, once it's written, it cannot be changed or altered. And that's why we say, it is written. That means I'm balanced. Because I know where my help is. I'm not trying to fight this on my own. I don't uh, throw my Hebrew down and pick up the French, if you know what I mean, because that don't change nothing. I tried it. It don't change nothing. It just makes things worse. See? So you might as well get your scripture. It's something where the power is. See, not only who should have did that, the apostles did that. How's it written? And if you read the book of Revelations, boy, there's over 200 scriptures that are uh, 200 instances where John was quoting from the Tanakh. Because it is written. Let's go to uh, Luke 2444. Uh, 
Uh, Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. See, because once it's written, it can't be changed or altered. That's why we need to use, it. in the name of Yahushua, it is written. See, that's the way he did it. That's the way I'm going to do it. And so this helps us to stay because the enemy wants you to put your hands down to get MAD, to get rocks in your jaws. Because once we do that, it's about over with. Because we're going to start using French instead of Hebrew and all these other things that they're not going to help us. They're going to make things worse. Uh, you watch a person uh, curse somebody out, does it make anything better? No. So why should I try that? Not going to make anything better. See? So I need my hands up and quoting the scripture. Because that's where the power is. Because once it's written, it can't be changed or altered. See? That's how you get yourself balanced. Do what he did. Do what they did. They always quoted, it is written. Oh, how is it written? See, when people start questioning you, you, you don't say, well, this is my no, your opinion. don't mean nothing. My opinion. It don't mean nothing. You might as well throw my opinion in the trash. It's what the scripture says. Because the Pharisees and Sadducees, they had a lot of opinions in it. Oh, boy. But what do you, who should call them in the end? Let's go to that up. John, I think it's John 10, 46 or 45, somewhere around in there. They were talking about, uh, uh, he said that we have Abraham to our father. He said, if Abraham was your father, he would love me. Is that right? Maybe it's eight. And uh, uh, he, he kept after him, and he finally told him, your father is who? The devil. These were people who were lead, supposed to be leading the people. But guess where they were at? John 8 and 39. Okay. It says, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. And Yahushua said to them, if you were Abraham's children... He would do the works of Abraham. In other words, if you was balanced, you'd love me. Because when Abraham seen me, he was glad to see my day. They weren't. Go ahead. But now you seek to kill me, a man that's told you the truth, which I've heard of Yahweh. Abraham would not do this. You do the deeds of your father. And they said to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even Elohim. And Yahushua said to them, if Elohim was your father, you would love me. Because I proceeded forth and came from Elohim. Neither did I come of myself, but he sent me. So why do you not understand my speech? Because you cannot hear my words. You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and did not abide in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. See, so they, got, they were coming up with all these opinions. Those opinions were no good. And finally the master said, your father is the devil. See? That's why we got to quote scripture. Our opinion doesn't matter. Quote, quote, do like he did. If he used scripture to defeat Hasetan, that's what we need. See? That shows balance. I don't need this over here or this over here. I need what he used. How many see that? That's, that's how you get yourself balanced. Because things come at you, and they come at you so fast. If you're not careful, then emotions will jump up, and oh boy. And then we start building mountains out of mole hills. But if we start quoting scripture, see, that helps the enemy. That, that defeats the enemy, and that helps us. See, sometimes we have to use the scripture to get your own self. Uh, there's a scripture that says, uh, where is that at? Uh, Sworn to my own hurt. Uh, I think it's Paul talking. If I remember correctly. But 
Sometimes we have to use the scripture on our own. Yeah, that's it. That may be Psalms, isn't it? Okay. That's Psalm 15 and 4. In whose eyes a vile person is condemned, but he honors them that fear Yahweh. He that swears to his own hurt and does not change. You see, sometimes the scripture is going to hurt me. <laughs> But I got to use it against me, myself, as well as anybody else if I'm out of line, correct? Is that right? I have to use the scripture for, my, for myself. That helps me get in line. It helps me to be balanced because all these things are coming against us daily. There's a daily barrage of different things coming at us, trying to knock us over, trying to knock us out of the race. But if we balance, we won't get knocked out of a race. We'll keep our eyes on the prize. We'll keep our hands up. And we'll keep walking. Why? Because we're balanced. We're not worried about this stuff right here. We got our eyes on the prize. We want to be balanced. I want to be balanced. Doesn't mean I'm perfect, but guess what? I'm practicing. Every day I practice. So, tonight we talked about are you balanced or do you lean to one side? See, what happens if you get a billion dollars a day and you're at zero tomorrow? How do you handle that? You got to know how to handle that. Sometimes that's the way it happens. You're broke one day and the next day you're rich. Or you're rich one day and you're broke the next. You got to learn how to handle that. Or the enemy will beat you up. Look at you. See? All these thoughts, emotions coming at us. But if we balance, we'll quote a scripture. If Yahuwah will be for us, who can be against us? Yahuwah did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Yahuwah should call thy enemy to come at thee one way to flee before thee. Seven ways that it should be smitten before thy face. Uh, we can use, uh, what is it, Psalms 27. Yahuwah is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yahuwah is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemy, my foes came home and eat of my flesh, they what? Stumble and fail. That's what you got to use. See, that's what you got to use. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For what? Thou art with me. That rod and that staff, they comfort me. That prepares me a place in the presence of mine enemies. See, see, you're going to have enemies. How do you handle them? You got to be balanced and use the scriptures on them. Because your words, my words, not happening. See, if he wrote it, <laughs> remember uh, that was the story of Daniel. They were telling the, the Nebuchadnezzar he was the king out uh, and he said, sign the position, because once it's written, it can't be changed or altered, even by the king. <laughs> even, even the king couldn't go back and change it, because once it's, once it's written, it couldn't be changed or altered. See, and that's why we quote scripture, because it can't be changed or altered. That's how you keep yourself balanced, because life is always throwing things at us. And we got to learn, I need to stand up right. I don't even need to get all these emotions and flowing because they, they're not going to help me. Amen? But if I learn to, to stay balanced, to uh, remember, we're going to get through this. The place I'm at is temporary. And uh, I, had, I read a, a meme uh, the other day that said, uh, there you go, stop looking at your... Stop, uh, how'd they go? Stop looking at your failures and start looking at the time, how many times you got up. See, so many people are looking at the failures. Well, look at how many times you got up. Uh, let's go to Michael 7 and 8. And then Proverbs says, a just man falls how many times? And does what? See, or he falls completely and gets back up. I'm Micah 7 and 8. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in darkness, 
Yahweh shall be a light unto me. See, there's going to be dark days. And there's going to be light. So we got to <laughs> balance the scales out. Who do you trust in those dark times when it doesn't seem like nobody cares, nobody loves you, nobody understands you, yada, 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 you fill in the blank. Father, yeah, don't get the bad brain. If the father loves you, the son loves you, we love you. But there are certain things you're going to have to go through. It's called growing pains. That baby, even though she's a baby and we love her, she got some pains to go through. She's going through a mask. She's cutting brand new. My, my teeth is out. <laughs> but she's putting in new teeth. That's painful for her. But it's, but it's needful for her. See? There are things we're going to have. There's nothing you can do. You've got to go. That baby has got to go through it and get some teeth. She that make her eat better. You think she eating now? Whoa! She should get some good, good get some good tea. <laughs> and so that's why we're learning to be balanced in this journey. If I want to stay upright, walking toward the uh, finish line, keep my eyes on the prize, Yahushua and the Father, loving the brethren. See, what do you do when you got a brethren that's not so lovable? You got to learn how to approach them. You just can't approach them anyway. Sometimes you need to lie. Sometimes you need to lamb. <laughs> it depends on how the person is made up. Amen? That's what we need. That's what balance is all about. How do I approach that person? We don't want to destroy them. We want to build them up. But sometimes it takes the uh, being a little rough with them in order for them to see. Amen? How many see that? And so tonight... Are you balanced or do you lean to one side? We're working on being balanced. Because if I'm balanced, I can help somebody else. See, if I'm leaning like this and they come to me, I'm going to help them. They, they lean on me, we both going to fall. <laughs> what does it say? Uh, uh, they both fall into the ditch. See, but if I'm balanced, I can let somebody lean on me and we keep going. And I can teach them how to be balanced, see? See how this works? Once you get balanced, you want to teach it to somebody else because that it actually helps you. You got somebody on your side that knows how to take care of business and they got your back because we're going to need folks to have our back. But we got enemies within and without. And so being balanced, we can overcome them. We can help each other overcome, see? And that's important. When you want to be balanced, learn to help each other. No matter what we go through, learn to help each other. Abba, we love and appreciate you. Hands up. Love your son, Yahushua. Hashem, Yahushua. Amen.